Hey, it's Erin Melton. Good to see you guys all again. It's been a while. I'm going to try to be really calm and composed today because I am total fangirling on our guest today. It is Gogo -Go Beth Key. Gogo, -Go, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me in my very professional attire today. <laughs> it's I awesome. It's just awesome. It myself, so you, know, if you have to fit everything in, the whole mom thing and then the mom bod and, and the businesses and everything that we need to work on. So I did a 5K walk this morning and showed up in my yoga go. podcast. So sorry about my non-professional. No, no, no. Superwoman. It doesn't matter. We've we've got we've got the person here and that's all that matters. And you always look amazing. What are you talking about? Thanks. So anyways, go go tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into real estate. Well, it was kind of an accident. I, I was a stay at home mom at a time. I, I really the only thing I had a clue about about real estate was what I saw on HGTV. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't even my idea, never even crossed my mind to be a realtor. My neighbor is the marketing director for Capital Title. She still is and was at the time too. She thought I would be a great realtor. So she's like, go, go. I already talked to Real Estate One, a, a, a broker or brokerage here in the state of Michigan, a family owned brokerage, one of the largest brokerages, though, but family owned. And she's like, go ahead and talk to them. You should just go and interview them and see if you like it and become a realtor. So I did. I went and interviewed with the broker and she said that if I pass my licensing, they'll even pay for it. So I was like, okay, I can do this. So I went and studied. I passed right away. And um, I think it was $190 then to get licensed. So I paid for it. But then they reimbursed me with my first closing. So my investment into becoming a realtor is by far is $0. And that was it. That was it. So that was back in 2011. And, and I'm a researcher. I like to understand things. I should say I don't like to not understand things. So... I just researched all the top producers. I went and knocked on their door and I said, hey, I hear that you're the top producer in the office. Why? What do you do? And and so I would just ask them all of these questions of but why, but why, like about three-year-old. And uh, eventually I, I came up with a list of things. And I was like, whoa, I'm not willing to do that. And I'm not willing to do that. <laughs> and I'm not going to do that. And so a list of things of what I wasn't willing to do became pretty long. But I'm also the sorest loser. So I knew I'm not going to door knock. I'm not going to cold call. I have an accent and a weird name. My real name is Junjvir, so nobody can pronounce that. That's why they call me Gogo. -Go. So I knew all of those things. And I couldn't afford Zillow leads. I couldn't afford to market an area like farm an area. So the list of things I, I couldn't do or I wasn't willing to do was long. So then I have to figure out, okay, what am I willing to do? Because I also, I, I will not lose. When something's important to me, I'm, I'm a winner or not playing at all. So... I was like, okay, that's social media. That was the only thing. Well, also think about it. I don't have any sphere. So I didn't know anyone. I moved here when I was 21, um, not speaking a language. I don't have anyone in this country that's related to me. Actually, I don't have anyone on the continent. Um, so I didn't have like the high school friends and the cousins and the right. somebody going to buy a house from me. So I was like, okay, so I have to work with strangers. And I'm like, right. well, where am I going to find the strangers? And I was like, social media, Facebook. So I started a Facebook business page called the Gogo's Real Estate. And that was back in 2011, and that grew into what it is today. That's amazing. Yeah, so just I think that's, all, that, that's like so neat that you went and talked to all the top producers. And I think that that yeah. is such. Why, I mean, not, why would you invent the wheel? They're top producers for a reason. They got there somehow. Why am I going to invent the wheel? But in, even though <laughs> I'm all about not inventing the wheel and just copy and paste, in the same time, I'm also all for, I don't want to work a day in my life. So I don't want to do things that I don't enjoy doing. I want to do things that I love doing and I get paid for it. So this way I don't work. I get to do what I love. Um, so after I did all that interviewing, I realized the list of things that I'm not going to do is long. It's long, but there is something an individual and something unique that you could bring to things. And that's absolutely what you did. Yeah. What would you say is your why? Why I do things? Well, that's kind of deep. Of course, I'm a mom and I have two boys and I have a husband and I have all the financial reasons of like, you know, I want to retire my husband and I want to live in multiple places. And I want to be able to afford whatever my little heart desires, but eventually get to a point where you have all this money and no time to spend it because you work yourself to death. Um, um, so that's not good either. That's a whole other conversation. But, um, so initially, you know, the why is always just to provide a better life. But the big why, as I look back and I stop and think for a minute, what really drives me? Because now I achieved everything I set my mind to. I mean, I made more money. I make more money in a year now 
now than I have made in a lifetime if I stayed in Romania. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's not the money anymore. Um, but what it is for me, I think, as I stop and look back, the big why behind it all is that I left everyone behind. So I, I'm an immigrant. I came by myself. I don't have anyone here. So I left my mom and dad, my sister, my cousin, everybody, grandparents, everybody back at home. Um, I've been here for, this is my 19th year. Out of the 19 years, I had one birthday party when my parents were out here. So 18 years of my life, and I'm 39, so almost half of my life, I don't get to spend a Christmas. I don't get to spend an Easter. I don't get to spend a birthday. I don't get to go over to mom's house on Sunday. I don't get to, you know, I don't have anyone. So, which is kind of sad because I'm so homesick and I want to go home. I don't want to cry. Okay, so with that being said, I think the American dream then has to worth it. If I'm doing this and sacrificing it all, then there has to be that I have to have this proof at the end to be like, this is why I left you all behind. Mm -hmm. It was it it was worth it. You know, I mean, so this way I can provide that amazing life and let my children see the world and live in multiple places and eat whatever we want and wear nice clothes. And not like you can do all that at home. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, we had food on the table and clothes and, you know, all of that. It's just I didn't get to eat different cultural foods. I didn't get to see palm trees and sand. You know what I mean? Like I saw mountains and pine trees. Like, you know, there's beauty in in, in the world in, in different things. It's just you don't get to I would have not got to see it all mm-hmm. um, if I stayed there. So now it's the American dream. Now I want to make them proud. Now I want them to say, I get it. I get it why you left and why you never came back. And, and at least it was worth it. I hope so. Absolutely. Talk to everyone about being the queen of social media. I know you touched on it a bit, but, you know, talk to us about what that means to you, how that has changed things for you. And yeah, so it was weird at first. It's still kind of weird. I actually just got a message today because I was teaching the local group here in uh, Livingston County a couple of weeks ago. And, and, um, you're just very different let's just put it that way (laughs) let's just say they don't appreciate what I bring to the table as much as the rest of the world does okay because because I'm so different uh, of how all of them do business and they just don't understand multiple revenues of income they don't understand how I could possibly not work and make money how I'm not chasing the next transaction it's just a different level you know different mindset levels that we are at um, mm-hmm. So with that being said, my business did start out locally first. Now people know my name nationally and hopefully here soon internationally, but but probably the first seven, eight, nine years of my career was local, local, local transactions, transactions, team building, local. And I was the oddball out. Every party I went to, people would look at me funny if I went to them. I didn't do a lot of mingling because they were competition. <laughs> I don't mingle with competition. Right. What, good are you, what good are you going to serve me? Exactly. Um, the reason I ever want is to have a good relationship with them. So if I have them on the other end of a, a transition, we have that like, hey, it's go, go kind of conversation. But right. other than that, I don't mingle much. So at first, and even still locally, it's a very different vibe than it is when I get to go out and national and speak at event, for example. Like it's totally different. They don't get it. It's it's just, I just don't understand it. Anyway, they would make fun of me all the time. Like I could tell, like going to parties, like, oh, there's Gogo again. She's going to take another selfie. She's going to take pictures again. Like it's just very different and uh um, so, yeah yeah that's how it started out and still kind of like that locally very mm-hmm. different nationally and internationally totally different atmosphere mm-hmm. and, uh, but then it got to the point eventually where people agents started noticing of like hold on a minute i see her name everywhere and i see her achieving this and achieving that and i followed her right. since you know 2011 when she was an individual agent now she has a team and now mm-hmm. she's an agent team and now she has a boot camp and now she has so it was started you know to to catch on and my name started making a name for it itself i guess in the industry and then people started asking me okay well go go how did you do that why do you do that? Why do you post this? How do you do that? What's the difference between an IGTV video versus a regular video? How do you have, what's a hashtag? How do you tag people? I had to tag location. So it got to the point where then the weirdness turned into an expertise. And then they would be asking me the same questions over and over again. So when I started going to these events, they were like, hey, go, go, I have a quick question. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just answered that question like 10 times. <laughs> so I was repeating myself. And so that's how I was, okay, what I need to do is I need to record myself because clearly I have a knowledge where most people just don't understand. Right. And I was like, I'm going to record myself and turn it into videos. And that's what turned into the bootcamp. So that's when the bootcamp is probably what started 
the name of the social media queen is okay. because that that is what kind of gave me the credentials of helping mm -hmm. others achieve the same thing to build a brand to lead generate with your own brand i never bought a lead in my life you know i've never bought a zillow lead a trulia realtor.com none of those things so what what really i stand for is is how to build your own brand and as frugal as possible i also don't like to spend money so my goal is organic social media growth do we teach Advertising social media growth, yes, it's a part of the bootcamp. We have two sides to the bootcamp. We have organic social media and then advertising social media, but I teach the organic side. So I stand for how can we do this for free um, kind of situation and also never run ads. So when you see my ads on social media, that's for our agent attraction course. I mm -hmm. have a course that I teach agents how to build a team or how to attract to their own brokerages. Um, and it's not EXP specific by any means. For It's for anyone that wants to build a team. So... That's a totally different course, but on the social media course, it's broken down into two sides, the organic growth and the advertising growth. So if you ever see me advertise, you're only going to see me advertise for my courses. I don't advertise locally for leads. All of my leads always been organic. So in the social media course, I teach the organic social media and Sammy, my business partner, teaches the advertisement side of social media advertising with money. Very, very cool. Now, I know that you seem super comfortable on camera, and I've even watched some of your things from a while ago, and you still seemed really comfortable. Um, have you always been comfortable on camera or filming yourself? I don't know if it's a comfort thing or it's more like an attitude thing. Um, okay. I don't care what people think. I never have from day one um, of my being. So I don't know if I'm designed like this. I, I know what I went through childhood to be who I am today. Um, and it definitely taught me not to care, but I always joke and say, I start caring about your opinion as soon as I can deposit it into my bank account. Ooh. I've got to adopt this, uh, <laughs> this go-go mentality for sure. So I don't, sure. it doesn't pay my bills. It doesn't send my child to college. It doesn't pay my mortgage. Not only that, but most people will have an opinion like it or not. Everybody right. has an opinion about you. They mm -hmm. form it in some way and their opinion is not my business. It's not my business. You know who needs to love me is me. Me needs to love me. Just like on an airplane. Just like on an airplane, they tell you to put the mask on yourself first so you can help others. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Gogo, -Go, what would your adolescent self not recognize about Gogo -Go today? I, <laughs> I never had that question asked. But... I was not a, um, what's the word? What, what's the word when everybody knows a person? Um, like a, almost like the social butterfly or the. the yeah. The, there's a word for like. Um, 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 the oh life of the party. No. Uh, not the life of the party. Um, I'm, I'm the one that's sleeping on a couch in a party. That's gotcha, Okay. <laughs> I love my sleep. I sleep in the middle of the party. I don't care if I'm tired. Yeah. Um, what is the word? Like, I was not known. I, I wasn't like, oh, that's go go. Right, right. I mean, like, now everybody knows my name. Then, mm -hmm. no, I was, I was nobody. It was just me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still just me, but people now know my name. <laughs> right. And you're like, um, okay. Yeah. But I was not, um, I don't know. I can't think of the word. I cannot think of the word, what it says, how it, that's said in English. I was not well known either way. I was not, I was just a kid. Okay. Okay. Um, what would you say being part of EXP and Honey Badger Nation, how does that make you feel? Oh, we're just proud. Like such a, such an awesome group. You know, I, I believe that we are the average of the five people we surround ourselves with. I don't think it necessarily matters in your personal life because I believe that God puts family there for a reason um, because you wouldn't pick them. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we get to pick our friends. Um, um, so I feel like in business, it's very important who you surround yourself with. I think like in personal life, God gives you those people because if they they feed a, a, a purpose. Where in business, I want to be surrounded with people that are where I'm going. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, in my real life, I'm looking for people and friendship wise, I'm looking for people that have skills and personalities that I don't have. So believe it or not, I'm a very nerdy. I'd rather sit on the couch by myself and play puzzles on my mm -hmm. phone, you know, to use my brain. I'd rather watch a documentary than go to a party. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I'm not the life of the party. Usually if I don't know people, I'll sit in the background, just kind of see where I fit in. Um, so those things I'm not, I'm not, but then my best friend, Rachel is the funnest thing ever. She's the one who can get me out of sleep to go and dance. She's the one who can get me on stage to sing karaoke. I would never <laughs> sing karaoke if it's not for Rachel. You know what I mean? So I feel like in real life, God gives you these people that, that helps you to have fun. Right. Because naturally, I'm not a fun person. I'm very nerdy and business oriented. And I love what I do and I would do it all day long. So I need on my personal life, the people that would teach me to have fun because I'm not a adrenaline chaser. I'm not a fun chasing kind of person. Yeah. In business life, though, I want something totally different. In business life, I want to be surrounded with people who are light years ahead of me. So then I don't have to guide myself, you know, to to pave my own way. I can literally just call Albie Stasic and say, hey. Um, how did you build your team? I can tell Jay Kinder. I'm like, if I have a husband and wife team, but the husband's already at EXP and the wife wants to come over, can she have a different sponsor? Literally called him last week. Right. Um, so like these kind of things, like the Chuck Fazio's and Angela Fazio's, like my sponsor will give his shirt off his back, um, you know, for me and our family, like just everybody that's in our upline, they're just amazing people. And they've been where I haven't. Um, so I, it's, it's the best way of succeeding in business is to literally surround yourself with the people who've been there, done that, and just have them an arm's length and a phone call away. And then you no longer ever have to figure out anything. You just call the people who been there, done that, and they'll tell you exactly what you need to do. And that's the Honey Badgers group. There you go. There you go. That's really what, uh, you know, Honey Badgers is all about. And the funniest thing is when we came in, and I love the thing about a Honey Badger, you know, Honey Badger doesn't care. And um, <laughs> you see? I don't care what people think. You know, it's, they don't care. I did figure out that it was more like, you know, obstacles. It's Honey Badger doesn't care about obstacles. It isn't necessarily that they don't care about people that they work with and all that, but you know, it's, it's. I just saw this quote, how, I don't know what it was like naysayers or something. They have a a problem for every solution. Mm -hmm. And I'm the opposite. Like, I don't care what the problem is. We're going to fix it. Like literally right now I have an issue where, where I can't get my son's passport on time. Right. I Googled it. I put it on, on Instagram. Who do you know? I'm going to reach out to a freaking politician. I'm going to reach out to a congressman. I'm going to reach you're getting, out. You're getting I'm that gonna, passport. You're not waiting for that, that time frame. Yeah. I don't yeah. care. What, I don't know if, if I have to go up to the passport department with a sign for three weeks in the right. front. I need to go home. I haven't seen my family in three years and walk the street until they take me in. I'm going to do that. Whatever it takes to get home and see me. It's same in business. Like whatever I set my mind to, I don't care if it's a million people going to tell me it's a bad idea. If I think it's a good idea, I'm going to do it. I don't care what's in my way. Like uh, somebody posted yesterday, if you're in front of a brick wall, if you just put big enough force on it, it becomes a door. So no matter what is in front of you, it's force. Like if you just keep working away at it, eventually it becomes a door. So that's how I look at everything. There is no problem. There's a solution for everything. I love it. Uh, go, go. You've been, you've had a lot of success up to this point for sure. Oh, I'm sure failures too. I just don't look at those. <laughs> <laughs> what is important to you at this stage of your career in life? Um, time freedom. So I've worked so hard for time freedom. <laughs> and then let me show you what happened. Somehow this happened. Yeah. This is not time freedom. Right. This is jail. (laughs) I work harder now than I've ever had in my entire life. I get to do what I love. Don't get me wrong, but I do it all day, every day, all day, every day, even at nighttime. Like I was telling Christy, my right hand girl is like, I swear to you, this is my day. I go upstairs to eat. I come downstairs to work. I go upstairs to eat. I come downstairs to work. I go upstairs to eat. I come downstairs to work. I go upstairs to bed. I wake up. I grab my coffee. I I come downstairs to work. I go upstairs to eat. Yeah. This is all day, every day. I I finally looked at my husband. It was last week, Thursday. I'm like, I can't remember the last time I left the house. Yeah. Because I am so back to back to back to back to back to back with appointments, like a podcast and a Zoom call and a this and a that and an inman and an EXP con and a this and a shareholder summit and then sell a house and then post and then this and then an agent joining and introduce them. And next thing you know, my house is full with agents and then I do the why not. And next thing you know, it's 10 o'clock Wednesdays are my craziest days ever. I work mm-hmm. 16 hours straight and I have one, from one call to another. So that's not time freedom. Mm-hmm. I created another job. <laughs> 
It's just yeah. a different form of working myself into the grave. So my yeah. goal now, and I, I was telling you this, I about two weeks ago or so, I, I'm, I'm still burnt out, but two weeks ago, I was like, that's it. I was ready to freaking cry and lose my mind. And I called my assistant and I said, block my calendar until September. Not one more podcast, not one more phone call, not one more anything. I need some time so I don't lose my mind. And you are my, she just called me today. You are my last podcast until September. I am so honored. And, and I'm so excited. So honored. <laughs> this, is, this is awesome. And I can see that's why you're so giddy because you feel that time yes. freedom coming your way. Yes. And I just need to go home and I need to recharge. I haven't seen my family in three years. Yeah. Um, you know, not getting a hug or like I talk to my parents every day and I talk to my sister every day, but three not years ago, good. you know, like my niece was walking around in diapers and now she's four years old. Right. It's time. You know what I mean, like life went by and that's not cool. So I really just want to go home. So my goal for the future is true time freedom. Um, like when I was talking to Brent Gove and he said, I can't remember the exact times, but he said he has every morning, I think, open until two o'clock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think he works from two to five, three hours a day. And it's usually a Zoom call or something like that. And then he's with his family for dinner again. And he has location freedom, too, because now he lives in multiple, you know, he lives in Puerto Rico. Right. So my goal is to do that. We are building a house in Florida. So we are this close to location freedom. Mm -hmm. And we definitely have the, the time freedom. But the problem is I love working. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. And, and I get excited when I get to do mm -hmm. it. as much as I'm exhausted out of, out of these podcasts and out of right. everything I get to do. I'm excited to go on a podcast. I'm excited to get to know. I'm excited to hop another agent to reach their goals and inspire yeah. them. But in the same time, I feel like I was neglecting me. Yes. So now it's like I need to recharge or I'm going to lose it. Yeah. And it's not. So now it's a new, different balance. So it's like now I need to learn how to balance when you truly have time freedom, financial freedom and location freedom. How do you balance that? Because I still love what I do and I still want to give back and I still want to go and do. But how do I do that without burning myself out? Even though I enjoy what I do, how do I do right. that and spend time with the family? And even when I'm with them, put my phone face down. So I think exactly. my next step is, is that I'm going to get another phone. I'm going to get a personal phone number and only people that really need to get a hold of me will have my personal phone number mm -hmm. and anything business related is going to be on another phone and it's going to be left on my desk. Mm -hmm. um, because like, I think actually Brent Gove said this when he goes on these trips and vacation, he locks his business phone into his safe. Mm -hmm. well, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. He goes back to the room, checks it between five and six o'clock before dinner. Everybody gets an hour. And next thing you know, mm -hmm. off he goes. And then he has time to truly spend with those people. Exactly. Okay. And to be present, for sure. To be present. So that's my next thing is to be present and to truly live the time freedom. Yes. Yep. For sure. Well, Gogo, -Go, I can't thank you enough for being on the podcast, particularly knowing now that I am your last one until September. My God. I feel really special. I think you don't know who I am not. So it's, <laughs> this is, this it's is, like, I love what I get to do. You know what I mean? We don't know who we inspire today. Who's going to be the next Aaron or who's going to be the next Gogo or who's going to like go and grab life by the balls as I like to say it. <laughs> and I definitely want to do that for the rest of my life. It's just, I can't do that on the, on the cost of time with my family exactly. and the cost of my health and my cost of my mm -hmm. mental health and just a little, <sighs> you need a little, you need a little breather. You need a little recharge. You need to um, get yourself back up to that spot where you're like not looking at your calendar and ready to cry. Run and run from one appointment. To exactly. One. Yeah. 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 So it's going to be very scheduled in the future. I'm going to be working only a few hours a day and it's going to be very structured and scheduled. And you, you know, like right now I only do podcasts Tuesdays at 11. So I don't care what podcast podcast reaches out to me and how big they are. If they're doing it any other time than Tuesday at 11, I'm not available Doesn't work because I won't take time away from my family so I can go on another podcast. So it's pretty much how, you know, I have to get structured. I have to learn to say no, no matter how exciting that opportunity is. So then I can live. Mm -hmm. For sure. So that's thank my you again. Thank you. Thank you again so much. Um, I know you're going to get that passport. Thank you. See you next time. Sure. And deal. Think about who you know that knows somebody, knows somebody, knows somebody at the National Passport Department. That would be wonderful. I am going to sit there and rack my brain and think <laughs> if I know someone. I'll think about it and I'll get back to you. I'll thank you so much. Go, go. Like, I know you have a big fry, but my son needs a passport. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I love it. Thank, Thank you, Gogo. Thanks for having me. Bye. Absolutely.